See, there is a lot of arguments out there in the tech industry that whether Java is getting obsolete or not. Well, I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future, but one thing I can definitely tell you that Java is not going anywhere at least for the next five years. The reason is very simple. So if you are a software developer in India and you want to work for top product based companies out there and not even product based, even service based companies also, you would find that most of the roles and responsibilities that you get as a fresher in India is mostly in web development. And when we talk about web development and backend languages, Java is predominantly used over there. You can go through my company reviews. You would see the likes of Amazon, Apple, Google, Oracle, and any top tech product based companies you name off apart from Microsoft, they all use Java heavily in their backend. Even service based companies like TCS, Wipro, they all use Java as their backend languages in most of the cases. So you can understand that if you're a fresher and you want to get into top tech companies as a developer, you are more likely to come across Java, right? So now I wanted to make a video on backend development using Java. So I wanted to like tell you that what are the things you need to learn? What is the exact path you want to follow? So basically it's a, it's a roadmap kind of thing. And I use that part to learn myself, but uh, I thought that, okay, many of you might not be familiarized with Java as a programming language in the first place, because to get started with the framework, uh, which is written in Java, you need to know what Java is and what are the things you need to learn in code Java, right? So keeping that in mind, I stalled that video and I first came up with this video where I would be telling you that what are the things you need to learn in Java as a programming language. I would start from complete scratch. Like I would assume that you don't know Java at all. And I would tell you that how can you learn Java from complete scratch as a programming language. And I will tell you all the advanced stuff. So from the beginning to the advanced stuff, I will be telling you everything in this video that will help you in cracking top product based companies uh, where Java is asked in the interview rounds. Second is you would be cruising through your semesters with Java and object oriented programming subject is there. Third is whenever you would start working for any company and which uses Java, which you're more likely to encounter, you would be having a great time over there as well. Fourth thing is if you're preparing for DSA and you want to use Java as the programming language, then definitely this video is also for you. Fifth thing is if you want to learn low level uh, design and design patterns, again, Java would be very, very helpful in that. Sixth is this will also help you to learn object oriented programming as I personally feel Java is the best language to learn object oriented programming. Seventh is if you want to get started with web development and you want to learn Spring Framework and Java as a back in language uh, then definitely this video is for you because again I will be telling you all the important stuff that you need to know in Java to get started with these things now without any further ado let's get started with this video and make sure to watch this video till the very end don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification so every time I upload a similar video you're notified also just a one small request I post a lot of travel content as well as tech content over my Instagram as well so please please uh, consider going over there and just hit the follow button it would mean a lot to me and also don't forget to join my telegram group all the links will be in description in telegram mostly i post job updates whenever i come across any so yeah all the links will be in the description down below and now let's get started with this video okay so we will start with the very basics first so first we will learn the class and objects now, now please try to understand that you are also learning about object oriented programming and I'm just thinking that you are taking Java as your first programming language. People who had a, a prior experience with C++, they would probably be understanding what classes and objects are, but still I would highly suggest you or recommend you to understand from Java's perspective. So don't just skip this part and you know, uh, follow it uh, in the order that I would be mentioning in that way, your concepts would be clear and that way it will help you to learn efficiently as well. Now under classes, you would be uh, like understanding that how can you declare members, fields and methods. And under objects, you would learn that how to instantiate classes, reference values and references. You would also learn the difference between objects and classes. Also learn to access instance members, uh, static members. Uh, next, you also learn to compile and run a Java application using the command line argument. Please don't start off using an ID. Please use the basic Java C commands for compiling your code and use the terminal for that. Please don't start off with an ID yet unless you get really comfortable with Java. Then learn about JVM and JRE. I do understand it's a bit theoretical, but I would highly recommend you to learn about this because it will help you in the long run. Also in interviews, you do get asked questions about JVM and JRE in your campus placements as well as whenever you would be further giving interviews. And another important question you need to understand that why is Java a platform independent language uh, and what makes Java really unique uh, than its predecessors. And while learning that, also you would be learning about bytecode, uh, understand that what is the importance of it. So yeah, do read about these things before you get started with Java. Now coming to the basic language elements of Java, uh, you would learn about the lexical tokens, you would learn about identifiers, keywords, separators, literals, integer literals, floating point literals, boolean literals, character literals, string literals. Also read about the string class, strings in Java are very important and way more efficient than its C counterpart. 
and if you had used C, you might be knowing that it was used to be a nightmare uh, using strings in C. Java strings are way, way more comfortable to use. So do read, read about the string class, the functions that you get associated with the string class. Also learn about Im immutability and string pooling. String pooling is a very, very important concept that you get asked in interviews. Even as a fresher, I was asked about the intern method. Uh, you can go and read about it in one of my campus interviews. So yeah, uh, it's a very, very important topic. Next again, the basics is the primitive data types. Learn about the integer, character, floating point data types, the Boolean types, the, you know, the what, what, what are the sizes of them. Also learn about the ASCII character and the unicode right so these things are important then learn to declare and initialize variables also learn about the default and initial values of these variables right uh, so let's say if you declare a variable right but you don't initialize it or you don't specify a number yet right what would be the default value of that so if you print that right let's say i define int a but i don't initialize or declare anything right i just now want to print uh, the a so what would be the output so try to uh, play around with it and if you know the answer please comment down below also learn about the lifetime of these variables learn about operators and expressions Learn about boxing and unboxing this is very important and you will see more of it in the wrapper class. Also learn about the control for statements like if, else, for, while, do, while, all these things, right? Next we are coming to, you know, class declarations, method declarations. You learn about the instance methods and the object reference and also learn a little bit about method overloading is a very important. Implement method overloading on your own and also understand why is it used, what is the importance and significance of it. Also reference is a very, very good thing to have in Java because in C you used to have pointers which was very, very confusing and if you remember pointers used to be really really hard to grasp while we were learning C back in our college days. So Java really helps you with that uh, when it comes to references but still uh, I would highly recommend you to know about pointers in C as well that we would be able to appreciate the reference part in Java and how does it solve the problem and also would be able to deep down understand it what's going on right. So I think I still feel that pointers in C is a topic that you should definitely learn about but for Java do read about references because they are going to be very very important while going forward. So next up is constructors. So we have the default constructors, the overloaded constructors. So do go read about it and uh, understand what constructors generally are and what do they do because constructor is very very important and constructor overloading is a very very important question if you are a fresher and giving interviews. So after this I think it's an ideal time to read about the main method. What is this function? and run, learn about the CLA that is the command line arguments, how can you pass input into as, as command line arguments and how can you play around with those inputs. Uh, uh, also learn the concept of public static void domain, why all the keywords are important, why do we need public static void domain, this, I think this is a perfect time to learn that and also uh, try understanding uh, whether you can run a Java program without using a main method. Can we do that? Do, uh, do comment it down below again, a uh, question for you guys. Next up is arrays. So in arrays you will learn about uh, declaring array variables, constructing an array, initializing an array, using an array uh, like accessing an element like how do you access an element right. Uh, then you would learn about multi-dimensional arrays. Also I would recommend you to learn about jagged arrays as well. Uh, uh, although I was never asked this question in any of my interviews but still I feel it's a very very nice topic to read about. So basically it is a type of array where uh, you can have multiple dimensions right. Next learn the sorting and searching functionalities of an array. So this searching functionality and sorting functionality would really help you a lot. Uh, while you are trying to you know uh, like solve DSA questions and also while you would be there in the company right. Then comes a very important topic passing primitive data values within functions, passing reference values as well, passing arrays which this is, these are very important things, uh, very minute things but the concepts needs to be clear about this otherwise you will be struggling out there uh, in the long run because these are very basic so please make sure that you spend a, couple, uh, a lot of time over here strengthening your graphs on these basic concepts. Then also learn about final parameters and the final keyword in general. Then learn about variable arity methods. How can you call a variable arity methods? and also difference between variable arity and fixed arity method calls, okay. Then you can read a little bit about the packages because understanding packages is a very, very important thing while you will be working on a large code base in companies. Then comes a very, very important topic which many people doesn't really talk about that is enums. Enums will be very, very important and you will see a lot of them in action in low level design and also while you would be out there in a company. Also learn about access specifiers, right. Uh, also learn about static members, final members, method overloading, right? The orders of these can be a little bit here and there, but you can follow this order. There is absolutely no harm in this. Then comes a very, very important topic of Java, the third of Java that is inheritance. Uh, learn about inheritance, abstract class, the super keyword, learn about the instance of keyword, L learn about runtime polymorphism and method overriding. Also a very important question out here to study is difference between method overloading and method overriding. This is the favorite question of all the uh, teachers out there in universities as well as interviewers. Learn about multiple inheritance in Java, whether it is actually possible to achieve it or not, do let me know in comments down below and also go through it. And here we come 
to interfaces again this is a very 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 important topic if you don't understand interfaces trust me you are going to have a very very hard time going forward from here so do make sure that you understand interfaces really really well uh, learn how to extend an interface learn the default methods in interface learn about the static methods in interfaces and the constants in interfaces next comes again a very 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 important topic that you would be using a lot in a day-to-day -day activities as a software engineer that is exception handling so now let us go through that what are the things you need to know in exception handling chapter so one is the categories of exception and what happens when an exception is thrown then learn about the common exceptions and categories learn about the try block the catch clause and the finally clause also there's a question here for you guys do comment it down below if you know the answer uh, can we really skip the finally block in Java? And if so, what is that one way? One more important topic that you need to learn is the try with resource. This is a very, very useful thing to know, especially when you would be working with database connections. So please read about try with resource, the throw statement and the throws clause. And I think now is the ideal time to learn the difference between final, finally and finalize. So now, uh, since we have already come across this finalize method, and it's a, it's a good time to talk about the object lifetime and the garbage collection chapter. Again, it's a very, very important chapter. Uh, learn about object finalization, finalizer chaining, invoking garbage collection programmatically. Again, where this finalize method kind of comes into picture. Uh, learn about initializers, field initializer expressions, declaration order of initialization expressions, uh, static initializer blocks, which is again a very, very important topic. Uh, declaration order of static initializers, instance initializer blocks, declaration order of the instance initializers. Then we come to one of the very important chapters which is related to inheritance, that is the object class, which is the parent of all the classes that exist in Java. So learn about the wrapper class, the common wrapper class. Uh, constructors, the common wrapper class, utility methods, the numeric wrapper classes, the character class, the boolean class and also learn about the string builder and buffer and the difference between the two, right? String builder is also an, a class that really really help you while solving string problems in DSA. Next comes one of the key features of Java 8 that is lambdas and functional programming but before you get started with lambdas make sure that you really understand uh, inheritance well, you understand interface and you also know about the anonymous inner classes as well as nested class and inner class, right? So these three new things, please make sure to learn before you actually get started with lambdas and functional programming in Java. So next are the slightly advanced topics of Java. Now you might not face this in your interviews, but this will really, really help you a lot uh, while you would be getting started with Java in a production environment, in a real-time environment, or you would be learning backend frameworks. Uh, now streams, Java streams is again a Java 8 feature. So spend some time on it. It is highly recommended to know Java streams because I have seen it in use a lot in the industry out there. Then learn about Java generics. This, this is a topic that very few people talk about, but I would highly recommend you to learn Java generic first before you actually get into Java collections. This is the way I learned and in this way you would be able to relate with Java collections really, really well. Normally people skip this Java generic programming chapter, but I was asked a lot of questions from it in my Goldman Sachs interview. Uh, if you haven't checked the video, please go and check about it. I would attach the link in the description, but I would highly recommend you for get your concepts really, really straight. Uh, go learn about Java generics and then jump into Java collections, which is going to be the next topic where you have to learn on hash map sets and a lot of other things that are there in Java collections. So do learn about Java collections. Not only it will help you in your DSA uh, while solving DSA problems, but it will also help you while you would be actually working out there in the company as well as you would be learning, you know, backend frameworks. Next comes Java IO. Java IO is again a topic that people generally skips, but this is a very, very important topic. So make sure you read and learn about these topics. Here you will also learn about file programming, which is again a very, very exciting thing uh, to do with Java. So please make sure that you understand this Java IO topic really, really well. If you want, I can make a detailed video on Java IO, Java generics, Java collections. So if you want such a video, please write it down in comments and I will be more than happy to make a video on it. And then comes the last part, which is the, more probably one of the toughest section of Java that is multi-threading. People again skip this topic out of fear. The college and university uh, teachers doesn't really teaches you these topics, but trust me, these are very, very important out there. And if you know this, you will be one step ahead in the industry while you go out there. So learn about the volatile keyword and also the atomic integer. Learn about the locks, reentrant locks and all those things. Learn about the learnable as well as callable. Here you would find the uh, anonymous inner classes and also the lambdas coming into picture over here. Uh, then learn about the executor service. This is again used a lot in uh, industry. So please, please learn about executor service. And finally, if you have some time, uh, you can learn about async programming in Java and also you can learn about futures. 
Uh, executor service is a topic that will really help you in a machine coding rounds when you would be given a multi-threaded problem statement or maybe the interviewer would ask you to deal with concurrency then executor service would come into picture and then async programming is also there you can learn about futures and all those things completable futures uh, if you are a college student you might skip this async programming uh, but yeah I mean if you also can read about this if you are done with all the previous topics but please make sure that you have got your basics covered because those are very important things if your basics are not really well like you don't understand how references work Work, right or let's say you don't understand the basics of inheritance or interfaces then you would be really having a hard time while understanding these topics right also for multi-threading you need to learn about the OS fundamentals as well so I would highly recommend you to learn the operating systems as well anyway I would uh, also I would be more than happy to make a video on multi-threading as a whole uh, if you if you really wish so do comment down below if you really need such a video but if I make such a video I would expect your motivation and support because normally I've seen for the tutorial videos uh, people generally don't want to watch it people are more for the roadmap videos and all those things uh, but yeah when it comes to tutorial videos the response is not that great most of the time so yeah if you if you are really interested I would make that video for you guys but again it takes a lot of out of me to make such videos uh, because when you're making a tutorial videos there is a lot goes behind the scenes so yeah I mean I would only make it if you guys are really interested so do comment down below if you need such a video so I think that's it mostly for this video I think if you read the such these topics thoroughly I think you'll be more than uh, ready to be a Java developer and you can then probably take the next step and probably the next video is going to be my Java backend developer roadmaps by the way if you haven't checked out my LLD roadmap do go and check it out now you have attached the link in description down below also there are two more videos I made a detailed video on DSA from scratch that how can you get started with DSA from scratch uh, if you don't know anything and what are the things you need to learn in the programming language for getting started with DSA what is the language that you should choose for DSA I have covered all in that video and also I made another video on my preparation strategy uh, when it comes to DSA for product based companies that how it helped me to crack different product based companies like the likes of Amazon, Salesforce, Goldman Sachs etc you can go and check out that video as well uh, having said that uh, don't forget to like this video and press the subscribe button so that it motivates me don't forget to follow me on Instagram guys that will mean the world to me as well I will see you in some other video and a very very happy belated Republic Day and we will see you in the next video till then stay safe and goodbye